okay, would it be like way too cliche at this point to start singing Give My Regards to Broadway? Because like that's all I want to do right now. I feel the room swaying for the bands playing one of my old favorite songs from way back when. So... <laughs> I forgot the words. I'm going to try and do this without a script, which means that it's probably going to be a little bit less polished than normal, but we'll see how it goes. Welcome back to Lizscapism. I just wanted this to be a little bit more of a chatty video, talking about my experience making the Hamilton Regency Spencer that you've been seeing all over the place. Sometimes I like to make videos that have an overarching theme or a kind of message to them because these are the things that I've been thinking about while I've been creating the video. And sometimes they have sort of takeaway lessons or ideas or concepts, and I love making those videos. And you have all been responding really nicely to those videos, which is really gratifying for me. So it's just not what this one was. Instead, what I was thinking about the entire time that I was making this video was thinking about my relationship with Broadway and my relationship with theater and my relationship with theater, especially in the last year, as I've become a kind of costumer myself. I'll talk a little bit about the Spencer, but frankly, as I've said many times before, you do not want to learn from me. This is not a tutorial space. I highly recommend looking at Christine's video or Jalea's uh, series of videos where she goes through some of the more specific trim aspects of the garment as well. Those are really important to watch if you're confused about certain bits of the nitty gritty. The trim was a heck of an adventure. But regardless, I decided to make the Costume Industry Coalition's pattern for the Regency Spencer that was one of the designs that Paul Taswell created for Hamilton the Musical. It's a military style jacket that was popularized for women's wear in the early 19th century during the Regency period. The Costume Industry Coalition, which is a foundation that is supporting out of work costume industry professionals during the COVID crisis, has released this pattern as a fundraising uh, initiative. So it is available for purchase on Etsy. There are straight sizes on Etsy as well as some plus sizes. The Hamilton Regency Spencer was designed, as you would imagine, for the musical Hamilton and therefore is not a historical recreation in the strictest sense. It is a Broadway costume, but it is really stunning in terms of its design elements and in terms of its adherence to very interesting details about the Regency costume as we understand it. And that's pretty cool. So anyways, to start with the Spencer, to start with that, um, it is a pattern that is designed by theater professionals and is written in language that is very specific to theater professionals. Some of the sewing lingo and some of the technique explanations are very similar to things that you would see in home sewing patterns and even in historical sewing patterns. Certain things are just words that are used differently in the theater costuming industry than they are everywhere else. And so it was an interesting activity. I will say, number one, right off the bat, this is not a garment for beginners. I would seriously, seriously recommend that you had made at least one other outerwear jacket lined project of this sort before at the very least. This is not a project to start on any new techniques with. This project was really hard for me to interpret and I had several friends who were making it along with me and I had watched several videos about it and I have made several outerwear garments of this style and cut before. So I can only imagine what a beginner would feel upon reading some of these instructions and having to make heads or tails of them. This is not in any way an indictment of the people who created the costume. This is just not what they do professionally. They do not write instructions for patterns for public consumption. Their profession is to make the costumes and design the costumes. If they do have to communicate how to make something to cutters or anybody else in the costuming department of whatever theater that they're working in, their language is very different than what you would see in your standard commercial pattern. It's just a language barrier. That being said, it was loads of fun to make and I'll talk a little bit about everything as we go through. I'm going to digress really quickly though and talk a little bit about Broadway. I came to love musical theater before I knew that it was musical theater. I watched Fiddler on the Roof so much when I was a kid that I wore out the tape. and uh, Hello Dolly, an exceptional musical uh, starring Barbara Streisand. Goodbye. What? Goodbye. What are you talking about? Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. 
Goodbye, goodbye. Nonsense. Don't try to stop me, Horace, please. Wait. But these things that I didn't recognize as theater because they were coming to me in a VHS format, uh, I later discovered were performed in theater spaces. I just loved going to plays. I loved going to the theater. And I've always felt totally absorbed in theater in a way that I don't get absorbed by many things. Um, ADHD. What can you do? Some of the people that I was like stupid in love with in high school and junior high school were musical theater kids. And so I would go to the plays and I would watch them rehearse and I loved being backstage and I loved experiencing that camaraderie and community as much as I loved actually watching the play. And it was one of the reasons that I became so attracted to theater was that you had a theater company and and repertory companies was something that I got really interested in when I learned, started learning about Shakespeare and started learning about, oh my God, there's so much. I can't even begin to explain how much there is in theater that informs a whole bunch of our understanding of art and culture. I just, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm such a huge nerd for the theater. It's so great. A lot of the TV shows and the movies that I really liked when I was growing up were made by people who were either originally playwrights or had had also had a deep and abiding love for theater, things like Friends. <laughs> and The West Wing. Except it's from Pinafore. It's from Penzance. I hate to stick my head in the lion's mouth, but I gotta ask you, were you the recording secretary of the Princeton Gilbert and Sullivan Society for two years? You know who did the best frat humor of all time? Rudy Valley. Groucho Marx. It was W.S. Gilbert. It'd be the very model of a modern network TV show. Mad About You was a television show that I loved, and Mel Brooks plays a recurring guest on that show. Come, 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 let us start. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it now. Okay. All right, boys. Take five. Smoke them if you got them. One of my absolute favorite theater experiences, I went to New York in 2016 and it was just absolutely non-negotiable for me to go to a Broadway show. I could have foregone just about every other experience in New York, although I would have been sad. I absolutely had to see a play on Broadway and I absolutely had to eat at Sardi's before. I wanna be a producer, lunch at Sardi's every day. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Sardi's is a restaurant that appears I think more in pop culture than just about any other restaurant in New York City, aside from maybe the Rainbow Room. And I doubt that even the Rainbow Room is visually depicted. It is, it is a restaurant where all the walls in the entire place are plastered with the caricatures of celebrities who have eaten there. I had to eat at Sardi's and we did, and it was fabulous. I don't keep souvenirs very often. I don't tend to buy souvenirs on vacation. The only things that I kept from that vacation were my Christmas ornament of a New York taxi cab. I collect Christmas ornaments from different department stores around the world and um, the playbill for the front page. Uh, the front page in and of itself is an interesting experience for me because I originally saw it as many people, I think probably originally saw it as His Girl Friday. His Girl Friday is an adaptation of the play, the front page, which is more of a bromance comedy, whereas the movie is a standard 50s screwball romantic comedy. That was such an exceptional experience for me that I got to be able to kind of live that little fantasy. And I know that that's a fairly touristy thing and I kind of don't care because it was amazing. No matter what you do on the stage, keep it light, keep it bright. Keep it gay. One of the reasons that I consider myself a professional YouTuber and not a professional costumer, even though I earn money from making costumes, is because I make costumes for YouTube. And the internet video for me is the medium. The costuming is almost a side project. It is the thing I'm passionate about and that I'm interested in, but really it is an avenue for me to be able to create 
internet video to explore the medium of video. And I am not a professional costume maker because I do not make costumes professionally. I sew in order to make videos professionally. And that distinction is even more important to me when I consider how much I value the professional costumers who work in theater and work in film and work in any number of other industries that involve putting clothing on people, mostly performers. I can't class myself with them. And this is not a way to talk myself down. This is not a way for me to be down on myself. It is a means by which I define my role in arts and entertainment. I don't want to say to be down to it. Yes, something terrific has happened. Hold on. Hold on. Hilly, come over here right away. Wait, Bruce, just a second. I'll explain everything. Now that I've talked for 45 minutes about my love of the theater, uh, let's talk a little bit about this pattern and uh, hopefully we can intersperse uh, some stuff as we go through because otherwise you're just going to be looking at my face the whole time and yeah, that can be a little bit intense. The design as it exists has a cropped jacket in the style of what I think these days we would call a bolero. The front pieces are trimmed with bias cording that is sewn in the pattern of oak leaves, three on each side. Then the sleeves are made with a elegant little crosshatch bias strip trim decoration thing. It has three elements to the sleeves, the long sleeve, the short puff sleeve, and the sleeve petals, which definitely don't look like vaginas. Yep, yeah, I don't know why you would think that. It's a little rude, frankly, but yeah, they definitely don't. <laughs> this garment was actually really great to make for me because I decided with this project to use up stuff that I had and not just in the like, oh, I'm going to use stuff for my stash kind of way, but in that way of, I imagine that a great many of you would be able to relate to this. You have certain things in your stash that you promise you're only going to use on the perfect project. And I'll tell you right now, spoiler alert, there's no such thing. There is the project that you want to use it for. It's the project that it would work for, that it's ideal for in many ways, but there is no such thing as the perfect project for that thing that's been sitting in your stash for 17 years. True story, by the way, uh, some of these have been sitting in either mine or my mother's stash for upwards of 17 years. So this project for me was a way to bite the bullet, was a way for me to look at what I had that I'd been putting off using, what I had been kind of wringing my hands about wanting to use, and I was just like, you know what, I'm going to use it. I was reading these project instructions and it said that the original design had been made with silk taffeta in mind. So I decided to opt for that suggestion, if you will, and uh, grab some silk taffeta. So having grabbed the silk taffeta from my stash, I did a little bit of measuring and found that I wasn't going to have enough of any one particular fabric. And I actually put together a couple of different design mock-ups. And these design mock-ups that I did on my iPad, I then sent to my Patreon followers and asked if they could give me a little bit of feedback and see which one they preferred. It's just mostly uh, different arrangements of colors. I'll show them on the screen, but it's just a different breakdown of the different ways that I could mix and match these colors because they actually go very well together. It's sort of a crimson burgundy style silk and then a gold silk and each has a little bit of embroidery on them. One has little leaf detailings and the other one has dragonflies. Already they were going to go well together so I wasn't afraid of mixing and matching the fabrics and they are of roughly the same weight and weave so it wasn't a big deal but I just didn't know. I didn't know what I wanted it to look like with those mixes and matches. It's really easy if you have all of the same fabric color because the original design was meant to have that tone on tone look. So my Patreon patrons came back to me and in the way that often happens, the minute that I put out the poll, I immediately had a favorite that I was hoping would win. And over the course of about 48 hours, it definitely did win. And so that was a lot of fun. And I'm really glad that I did that because I think it was a great way for my patrons to get involved, but also it was a great way for me to try out this new idea of kind of sketching out my ideas ahead of time, either on paper or an iPad, but frankly, the iPad was super useful here because my art skills medium, and that was a lot of fun. We decided that the body and the petals would be red, as well as a little minor trim here and there, and then the rest would be gold. So that's the interfacing of the collar and the sleeves. When it came to the trim, I decided to go on a slightly different route. I really don't like making or using bias tape as much as humanly possible. It is one of my least favorite things to use. I don't know why. It's possible that I just don't have the knack for it. It's possible 
that I haven't used it enough to be good at it yet. But on a project that I already knew was going to be a little bit tricky and a little bit fiddly, I didn't want to add to that trickiness and fiddliness. So what I ended up doing, what I decided to do was to grab some braid and ribbon that I had in my stash that I had again been waiting for the perfect project for that never came and just decided to bite the bullet and go for it. What I ended up using was a little bit of black braid on the front of the jacket to create the oak leaf look but because I didn't have quite enough of it to do the curly Q pattern that exists on the original jacket, what I decided to do instead was to trace a sort of feather slash smoother leaf shape around the original design and to follow the braiding with that. I'm super pleased with how it turned out because it I think calls back a little bit to that military style that the Spencer jacket was originally created from. That braiding that would exist around like epaulets and around the front of jackets was really popular in sort of hussar and other military style jackets through the 18th and 19th centuries. The rest of the assembly was actually pretty straightforward. It's just that again, having to read those instructions, it just took a little bit of extra time to kind of decrypt the instructions. So this kind of stuff made it a bit of a challenge, but one that I kind of rose to in a really eager and interested way because I felt like I was sort of had this like intern aspect to it like I was the new kid on the block trying to master this like crazy pattern that was going to just run me through my paces and I definitely I feel like paid my dues in that way. So one of the things that I decided to do was to kind of go my own way with the pedals on the shoulders. I went back and forth on whether to have them at all and that I think largely came down to the fact that they're a lot of work but also depending on what you want to use the jacket for, they are a little bit much. And that's not to say that that's a bad thing. It's just that they're a little bit much. They're hard to do. And after failing spectacularly once, I decided that I didn't have time or energy to do it entirely. I decided to go with the model of it and do it my own way, which is why I'm not showing you a lot of that footage because I don't think I'm a very good example in this particular case. I kind of slapdashed it in my own special way. I ran out of bias tape, which meant that the last one, the very back, I'll show you some footage of it later, uh, is just top stitch embroidered all the way around with a fancy stitch. So I made it work on both sides the exact same way. So even if they are not the same as the other petals, they are mirror images of each other. So that was a choice. Frankly, the assembly, the making of the thing, the doing of the thing, it's sort of secondary to me in a lot of ways of this weird opportunity that I had to have this sort of memory lane adventure as I was going through. I was thinking about all of the musical theater that I'd gone to see, all of the theater that I'd gone to see, my experience with the West End and Broadway. I've always liked the idea of the theatre. The smell of the grease, the roar of the paint. <sighs> this is why I write scripts for these things, guys, because otherwise I just babble for hours. But with that in mind. I'm really happy to have been able to create this thing to feel a little bit closer to the people that I value very much their output in terms of uh, creative and artistic expression. Thank you again to everyone who supports me either by following me on social media, in subscribing to my videos, in supporting me financially, either with one-time Kofi donations or with Patreon. My Patreon page and my Kofi donation page are linked below, as well as the Costume Industry Coalition pages that I've mentioned. I want to also thank everyone who has had such an amazing reaction to my last two videos, both of which were videos that were very close to my heart and that I've been planning for an extremely long time in one way or another. All right, we're gonna wrap up this chaos machine now because um, I am out of voice and I am out of words and I am out of brain and that's probably a good time to stop. Let me know if you're making the Hamilton Spencer. Tag me on Instagram, comment below, let me know. Uh, I think it's a really cool project. I'd love to see everybody's looks with it. Anyways, I'll talk to you later, bye. Nothing like a show on Broadway, nothing like a Broadway show. Hearts can skip a beat on Broadway. If you're feeling blue, I'm telling you, that's the place to go. I want to be a producer, sport a top hat and a cane. I want to be a producer and drive those chorus girls insane. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, hello. I'm sorry. Did the clap upset you? <laughs> Did the clap upset you? Is that really? Is that really it? I clapped and yeah. Okay. Hi. Welcome back to. Oh, the window's open. Shit. Ah, fuck.
Just why is everything going wrong? Oh, we're crying out loud. 